this is my dimensional aid. My, dim my dimensions page is the dimensional aid, so you can see how big things are. So I'm looking at this on my mini computer, so you can only see the dimensions. So from here <coughs> to here is negative 18, which is one quintillionth of a meter, called an atometer, which is one quintillionth of those in a meter. So that's one zero 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 very small it's as small as we can go so this is the size of an electron you see in a normal laptop you could see the other sizes and you can jump from one size to the next from zero to a negative 18 to positive 36 but this is a mini computer so you can only see just the size of it but it doesn't matter because we're going to go down so this is a this is a this is an electron nuclear and quarks this kinds of things are this small you see excuse me it's cold it's hot in here so this is negative 17 right 100 quadrillions quadrillions of a meter which is 10 atometers right so this is 10 times smaller than up here it gets 10 times smaller you understand that means that this is 10 atometers, whereas this is just one atometer, you see. So now we're at 100, we're at 100 quadrillion of a, mini, of a meter, or 100, or 100 quadrillions of a meter. See, there's two ways of saying that. 100, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, you see, in a meter. So let's go even 10 times smaller. Now it's 10 quadrillions of a meter or otherwise known as 100 atometers, or 10 quadrillion of them in a meter, you see. And there's all the zeros. And you see how it got even 10 times smaller, or 100 times smaller, than going across the entire screen, you see. Right? So watch. La la, la 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 la, la 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 la. We're becoming farther away from it, if you want to say. So now look, there's something else that, it, that appears. It's this guy right here. So the electron would be the size of a tiny little dot, and then this appears. This is 10 times larger if it was in this field. So it would be like too big to fit in, and that's why I didn't fit it in. One quadrillionth of a meter. It's called a femtometer, or a Fermi. One quadrillion and a meter, with all those zeros, negative 15. And it's the range of the weak force. The weak force is how far away you have to get away from something for the atom to not stick to each other. So if you can get the atoms this far apart, then I guess you can have atomic bomb, but I, I need to review that a little bit, so let's move on. 100 trillionth of a meter. So let's go to 10 Fermis. 10 Fermis. That's the weak force range, and that's the helium, that's the proton. So if a proton can get that far away, then the range of the weak force goes away. It's kind of like the aura of the proton. But I haven't studied this in a while, so I don't know exactly. The smallest gamma rays are this big, so very small. Now, when I mean gamma ray, I mean the wavelength. Wavelength. Crest, trow. Crest, from crest to crest. That's the size of the smallest gamma ray. So gamma rays can pretty much pass through a proton, but barely. And they could slice through a neutron. So gamma rays are very are very da da dangerous and can hurt you, your neutron. And that's a U, that's a D, and that's a D, the different quarks. Just constantly moving and bounding about because it's all energy at this size. Helium nucleus, this is the helium nucleus. Neut neutron, neutron, proton, proton. The shorter than this, the nuclear force is stronger. Longer than this, the Coulomb force is stronger, you see. So if you can get a nucleus within this distance to each other, they're going to suck to each other. But if you get them farther apart than this distance, then they're going to push away or something like that. I, I need to do my reviews. This is 100 Fermis, you see. So if this is the nu helium nucleus, well, look, the helium nucleus is 10 times smaller here, you see. Now the gold nucleus, the gold is the most precious of metals in the entire universe. And this is the, lar the largest of nucleuses. 
But look, the largest of the nucleuses is barely even larger than the gold nucleus. So nucleuses are basically the same size. The neutron and the proton is about this big. And that's how big the nucleus is. So the, the atom sizes are the same, basically. And the nucleon sizes are pretty much the same. Well, unless you say that that's much bigger than that. It's all a matter of, of perspective. This is the smallest of gamma ray in the nuclear force, as illustrated before, you see. Because I have these things here, but then you can see them here. And that's just how it functions. This is a picometer, right? 100 Fermis. 1,000 Fermis is otherwise known as a picometer. And that's how big the nucleuses are inside of the picometer, which is from here to here. 10 picometers. There's really nothing in there. These little guys are even 10 times smaller, which would be tiny little dots on there. Maybe a period. Maybe I should put a period there. So let's go. Another One angstrom is 100 picometers, you see. And the largest ganometer, which is one angstrom is one-tenth of a nanometer, you see. So one angstrom is basically the size of a hydrogen atom. Here's the proton. Obviously much smaller than that, as we can illustrate from the above fields. But the valency, or the, the area of its size, is this size, you see. That's the size of the atom hydrogen atom. So here's the hydrogen atom right here as it got 10 times smaller. This is the carbon atom, what we're made out of. Carbon has six electrons in two valency levels, you see. The first valency is only two electrons and the second can be four and all others four after that. Don't ask me why. God knows though. So this is the diatomic hydrogen, it's the smallest molecule because hydrogen is the smallest atom. So that's about how big it is. Now, the smallest x-ray is this big, so x-rays can get quite small. That's how electron microscopes can take photos of things that are almost as small as an atom. And the smallest gamma rays. I mean, the largest gamma ray is the same size as the smallest x-ray. That's the valency difference between an x-ray and to gamma ray. It's the demarcation line of what the scientists have decided to put. This is a water molecule. We have the hydrogen and then we have oxygen and oxygen attached. It's not very realistic though. I mean hydrogen and hydrogen with oxygen in the middle. So I guess oxygen is a little bit bigger than hydrogen but, but not by that much. It's not a very accurate portrayal, but I like how it looks like Mickey Mouse. And they aren't inside of them. They're next to them, but whatever. That's about how big it is. There's the atom. There's the gold atom. You can see all the electrons and all their valency levels. And there's the uranium atom. So that's how much bigger the uranium atom is than the gold atom. Because the uranium atom has to be bigger because it is has more valency levels, which makes it larger. And also, the, the nucleus is larger, but of course the nucleus isn't that size. As we have illustrated in the fields above, it has 92 electrons. The smallest x-ray is that big. Now the x-ray, there's the smallest of the x-ray sizes right there, right? Now, this is, I guess, the largest of the x-rays. I guess I have to fix that. This is 10 nanometers. 10 nanometers. So if this is the size of an atom, 10 times smaller than that, here's the atom. There's the uranium atom, there's the gold atom, there's the carbon atom, there's the water molecule, and there's a sulfuric acid atom molecule. Here's the sucrose molecule, the exact size of it. Here's a buckyball. Here's an insulin protein. It's the smallest of the proteins. And there's the size of the double helix. You see, there's an atom. There's an atom. That's an atom. That's an atom. That's an atom. And these little guys in here are atoms. The double helix is quite small, as you can see. But scientists are quite, quite good at creating things that are very small. 
This is a buckyball. It's 60 carbon atoms configured in a Buckminster Fuller type um, geodesic dome. I do not know how the scientists were able to do that, but they are able to put 60 carbon atoms together and that's how big it is. It's about exactly the same diameter as a double helix. Now, just as a side note, if you are unfamiliar with the double slit experiment, which shows the uncertainty principle, which shows how our minds can actually influence physical reality, our attention actually phys influences physical reality, well, the double slit experiment works with the buckyball, not just with photons, but with the buckyball. So if it works with something as big as the buckyball, you better betcha, bollab dollar, that it works with the DNA double helix. The DNA double helix is entirely subject to your mind and your attention. Okay, so let's move on. 100 nanometers. The insulin protein is now 10 times smaller. And here we are. And that's how big the insulin protein is compared to a parstenine transcarbamosylis protein. And the alcohol dehydrogenase protein and the porin protein and the catalase protein and the chemtifin protein. All of these different proteins, you see. Which are not much. And this is what they look like, by the way. They're configurations of atoms. And here's the collagen protein. That's how collagen can goop up together because they can all attach to each other like strings, like uh, like Velcro. Okay? There's the water molecule. You can barely even see it. There's the gold atom. You but you can see an atom compared to a protein, so that's how small proteins are. There's the double helix next to a protein. There's the myoglobin protein and the hemoglobin protein. Quite, quite small. But you know what's really small also? Viruses. The polio virus is quite small. You can see a water molecule. You can see a freaking gold atom next to a polio virus. Polio viruses aren't that many atoms. It's kind of like the polio virus is to, to a gold atom what the sun is to the earth. Pretty interesting. So let's go down. Polio virus is the smallest of the viruses. Here's the polio virus right here. But this is the polio virus next to the flu virus, which is quite ugly, next to the herpes virus and the pox virus, the myoplasma, or, and the AIDS virus, which is an interesting looking virus. And there's the d DNA double helix up there, which you can barely see. But the smallest of bacteria are the same size as the largest of the viruses. So the smallest of bacteria are quite small and thusly hard to clean away. You can actually see the DNA double helix next to the, the myoclasma virus, or uh, myoclasma bacteria. Very, very interesting, I would say. Now, these are all of the different, what you call them, all of the different, you know what I mean, the proteins. So let's go down. This is a micrometer, by the way, otherwise known as a micron, shown in scientific jargon as a U-M. So let's go down farther. This is the smallest of machines that humans can make. It's called the transistor gate for computers, transistors. Now, I don't know how they made them so small, but they did. Because look how small it is compared to a polio virus, the DNA double helix, and all of these other things. Very, very small. You could put a bacteria cell on top of it. Transistor gate. But you know what's about as big as a transistor gate? the DNA chromosome. That's the DNA chromosome compared to the DNA double helix. DNA double helix twisted about and about and about and about and about together creates the DNA chromosome. Now we discovered DNA by taking a picture. This is an actual picture of a DNA chromosome. And because it's an X, the mathematicians got together and they figured out if you twist this little guy around and around and around and around and around and around you're going to end up getting something that looks like that. I don't know how they figured it out, but that's what you're going to get. So that's how they guessed that DNA is a double helix. And that's about how big it is, about as big as a transistor gate. Other Or as big, whoops, I got to stop this and we're going to start again.